we are glad to be with you tonight. I'm Nathan. This is Christian Life Assembly of God. Coming to you tonight. And uh, glad to be doing better. I know several other folks are as well. And, uh, we want to go to God in prayer for this Sunday night for several of the needs that we have. Uh, we want to remember some that have sent in. Continue to remember the Carver family. His sister Doris has passed away, and we'll talk about that just a little bit more in a few moments. But we also want to uh, remember the uh, brother Don as he continues uh, to be ill there in the hospital, very serious. We believe for good for him. We also want to pray for the other several of the other needs we've had. We've had the Rainiers as well as um, Linda and the Woodies and several others still recovering. Uh, we just ask that God will minister to them, and we know several others are recovering as well, and uh, uh, we just pray that God will bless and, and minister uh, to them. And uh, uh, So we uh, want to go ahead and pray for those needs tonight, that the Lord will minister to them. So let's bow our heads tonight. Father God, we thank you for a chance to, to gather together tonight, even though we're separated by distance, we're not separated from you, we're, se we're joined together in the power of your name. And Lord, even as we mourn, dear God, we thank you that you are still on the throne and still in control. And we ask, Father God, that your blessings be with these needs, continue to be with the Carver family as they mourn, for Brother Don Carver, as he's still in the hospital, we believe for good in his situation. We also intercede, dear God, for just a great touch, dear God, for those still getting well uh, with the COVID. I, we pray, dear God, for uh, Sister Linda and the Woodies and, and others, dear God. Uh, I know many others, and Pastor Gary prayed for this morning, dear God. Some that he knows that have the COVID, we believe for good, that for each one there will be a special touch of your name in their lives. We thank you for this. We ask, Father God, also for the Rainiers tonight working their needs. And they're them physically. You know the needs. And we believe for Brother David and Sister Jane, dear God. And Lord, you know what to do in all this. We put it in your hands for the church and believe for good things for the church ahead. And we love you for it. And thank you, Lord, for the ministry that, Lord, um, we're confident is coming up ahead for us and for, for others, dear God, who have been struggling. And for any needs out there that we haven't mentioned, and for any watching tonight, we agree with them, dear God, that you are on the throne, that you're not separated by time or space. As they pray to you and we agree with them, we believe, dear God, that uh, you're working in the midst of these needs. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We are grateful to the Lord tonight to be with you uh, this uh, Sunday night and hope to be back in service and church soon. Uh, appreciate Pastor Gary sharing the word this morning. They were at church today, but since uh, there was none but their family there, uh, they had some technical difficulties, so they decided to shoot it from their house. But we appreciate all their efforts in getting the word out today and encourage you to tune into that on, both here on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and as far as Wednesday goes, stay tuned for further announcements. Hoping to come back. I'm hoping to be, ba be able to come back to church soon. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, my family is too, so praise God for that. Uh, but we'll make some announcements on that as the week progresses. And also on some further cleaning. We did a lot of cleaning. Pastor Gary, Sister Ruth worked hard on that uh, to get everything tidied up for this weekend. But uh, we're talking about getting some more cleaning in, and we'll announce that as we get that done as well. Uh, on just some looking at some carpets and views and some things. So we're, we're working on it. Uh, to bring the church back, and God's going to bring us back, and ready for good stuff ahead. And uh, we want to um, share with us just a few thoughts here that uh, we're grateful for those the Lord's bringing back up, but also mourn for those who mourn, as the scriptures say. And with Sister Doris is passing this weekend, I want to share just a, a few thoughts that I had tonight on that for us. Um, so, I just tell you what, we'll start off and we'll pray and ask the Lord to bless this this message 
as well tonight. Father, bless our time as we share from your word and share our heart tonight. And thank you, Lord, that you're with us as we mourn and also celebrate the good that's there. And we just give you the thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's good to see some folks coming on. We always appreciate the comments. And anything you can leave with us is much appreciated just to kind of know uh, how things are going with, with us as we share. So, um, but with Sister Doris passing this weekend, they were special folks in our church. She and Brother Don Carver had been married for over 40 years. All oh, the many places they'd gone and preached and, and ministered. She was a blessing, I know, in his ministry, and she always had a heart to serve, always had a heart to, to, to just minister to people. And in our church, both when Brother Roy was pastor and when I was pastor, I've been pastor there over 20 years. They ministered there at the church, Christian life. A lot of good times together. And, uh, we had many dinners together, and she was always very practically concerned for everybody in the church. She would always ask about how everybody was, and always ask uh, uh, just to check in on and see how everything was if somebody wasn't there. She was always good to make sure Brother Carver didn't get too much dessert <laughs> or do too much uh, uh, that, that would get him. But, she was always on the lookout for, for good to do, and we appreciate her. And uh, my family's here with us tonight, and able to join. And we're just, it's just a lot to, to take in. Um, it was very, very shocked, very shocked this morning to receive that message. I just spoken with her by text message on Friday, and she asked for continued prayers. Um, but I just was thinking, I wanted to share with us tonight, what would she say to us? Uh, if she could uh, share with us tonight. She's with Jesus now, but what would she say to us? And I watched today her final message that she shared with us at Christian Life in August, uh, the beginning of the month, this month, and uh, what she had to say to us before she got sick. And um, I just, just wanted to share a few thoughts from that. And uh, she got up, stood up there and said, there's more. There's more. Even with all the trouble we've had this year in 2020, there's more for us. More for God to do in each one of us and also for us at Christian Life and the church as a whole, the whole church, wherever the body of Christ is. And uh, she, she uh, I believe, very much tell us that we need to keep going. And the passage that she shared with us was in 2 Kings. And we actually preached on this a couple of months ago, so that's actually on here as well. But I'm going to read these verses again in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verses 15 through 17. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he, being the prophet Elisha, said, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the, young, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen. And she shared this passage. This was what she, she preached from and uh, she said that, you know, it's hard and scary when you can't see what's out there. She was talking about looking out in the dark, and it's hard. And the story that we just shared about was one where the prophet was looking up and seeing all the armies in the hills. And just, it was a fearful thing. Uh, God was giving us a year of vision in 2020 that had been prophesied. And that definitely has turned out to be true, she said. Not with just the many things we've seen this year, but also with for spiritual victories. Spiritual victories and spiritual sight that our eyes can see spiritually what's happening and not just the physical that's going on around us. So, we, um, we Pastor Gary talked this morning on the mountains, claiming the mountains and the difficulties in our lives. As I said, it's it's good to watch that and see that, and talking about the story of Caleb and how he was gonna he was gonna have the mountain, and may we have that spiritual vision also that Elisha and his servant they had. They were given the vision to see it wasn't just them going up the mountain. It was it was 
Uh, chariots of fire all around to protect them and guide them. And so there's help. Uh, as, as we trust God, there is help. Uh, and he will give us the vision to see what we need to see. And she, she shared this passage of scripture, and I think it's a good passage for us. I think she was good for you know, leaving us with this thought that you know, we can see spiritually what's coming ahead. And, um, at the end of when she shared, she proclaimed a desire for souls to be saved. For souls, and I firmly believe that she would tell us to, to keep seeking souls to be saved. Uh, just like the, I know the Carvers in all their travels and many places and times, they saw many people saved. And um, Sister Doris, she never really will die uh, because of all the saved souls that I believe will testify, and those that they save will testify on down until Jesus comes. Oh, what a crown there is for Sister Doris and what she's receiving. This passage is in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. I love this passage of scripture. And I shared it with another dear lady that passed, Sister Shirley Holder. And uh, when she passed, uh, we, we shared this. This is in Daniel 12, 3. And they that turn many to righteousness shine as the stars forever. Shine as the stars forever. And I believe that's true for Sister Doris. And that's true for not just her, but all who win people to Jesus and that's that's really what we're down here to do Sister Doris has run her race but down here for us what are we what are we here to do we're to win people to Jesus and see people saved and she also sang a song as she always did her voice would, would definitely would resonate through, through our church and she sang a song through it all and that was truly what the Carvers had done through it all uh, she learned to trust Jesus, as that song says. She learned to trust his word. And um, it, it was quite a song for her life to say that, hey, through it all, I've seen God work, even in all the troubles and all the doubts, as that song talks about. But Jesus was with her in the mountains and in the valleys. He's with us, too. He's with her now and is taking care of her uh, all the way to the end. And that's the same thing is true for her. And so we, we honor her and honor what the Lord has done through her tonight. And I just want to continue on in another passage that, that shares too, because that song through it all talks about trusting in Jesus. We learn to trust him and all the stuff we go through, because you see, there's a choice that we have. In all the troubles that we have, we can learn to either trust or we can learn to, to, to uh, doubt. And in John chapter 14, in verse 1, the Bible says this. Jesus was talking to his disciples and said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Don't be troubled, he says. And we just can't stay troubled. Uh, and I have to say today, as Sister Doris has passed, it's definitely left me troubled. And it definitely left me grieved in my heart to hear of her passing because of all the blessing that she was. But we have a choice. I have a choice. We all do. That when we, we're faced with, with um, despair or trouble, that we don't have to stay there. We can seek the help. We go to God in prayer. We turn to him in these hours of grief. And don't let it let it sit on the things that are, that are wrong with us, but instead look to the Lord in these times of sadness and sickness and hurt. Well, why can we do that? Why can we do that? In verse 1, it tells us, you believe in God, believe also in me. It's that faith. It's that trust. Jesus asks us to trust him in the scriptures in this passage. He knew that trust had to be earned. And he did everything to earn our trust. He came to earth. He lived among us. Just as we did. He did many miracles, many great things. He bled and died on the cross and rose again. He he knew we faced that death and so he was willing to give everything for us on the cross and then he rose again to show us eternal life and so that most important choice that any of us will ever make is whether or not to trust Jesus with our lives with our everything and for those saints like the one we're celebrating today and so many others that have gone on to be with the Lord they made that decision to trust and um they, could, they never made a better decision than to turn to Jesus. And if you haven't, what a good time to do it. We see that for all of us, time is short. 
time is short. We don't know. Sister Doris's passing was unexpected. Even as much as good as she did, it was, it was, you know, we don't always know when our time is coming. And uh, we need to trust him today. And if we have trusted him, we can go deeper. That trust can be growing because in the, in the times of trouble, it really tests us. It's put to the test, the trust that we have. And uh, we need to go deeper with him as we have the ability to because it's going to help us greater and greater to pass more tests. And if Sister Doris could say anything to us today and all that she saw in her life, all the blessings that she had, she'd tell you that Jesus was the best choice she ever made. I know that for sure. And in John chapter 2, 14 and verses 2 and 3, the Bible says this, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. And though Sister Doris won't come back to Russellville to, to minister with us again on this earth, as King David said long ago, we will go to be with her and go to be with Jesus. So we have a home prepared and promised by Jesus for us, a mansion ready for us. And he's prepared to come and get us. And though our, our time is not yet, we're left on earth for a purpose, it will come. And our hope is sure. The hope that we have is sure. And so I want to leave that with us tonight and just say if we need Jesus, we need to realize in these last days he could come at any time. He could come for us, we could pass, or he could come for us and, and, and the catching away of the saints will happen and then it'll be, it's going to be a hard time for those left behind. And if we grieve, Today, if we're grieving about anything going on, maybe we have uh, our own family we grieve for, or our own difficulties physically we grieve for, we know that just as Jesus said, he can be trusted. We said that. Those who mourn will be comforted. Those who mourn will be comforted. And also, if we're going over the mountain, I believe that Sister Doris on the authority of God's word would tell us that we can do it. We can do it. We honor her tonight and are thankful for her life and the blessing that she was to share uh, her life with us for all these years. Um, and look forward to seeing her again real soon. Continue to pray for the Carvers and Brother Don and, his, and the situation there. We know that he, God is a miracle worker and we stand believing for that family. But we, we understand tonight that even as we grieve, um, we know that there's a comfort for us. And so we want to pray for those tonight that, that might need that comfort, that might be watching us, and just pray for the Holy Spirit to work through this prayer. And if you have a need, maybe it's caused you great grief and disturbed you. You know, sometimes we have those things that come at, come to us, and it's just it's it's shaking me today. I'll, I'll be honest, it shakes us up. If that's happened for us. We understand this that in the shaking, He's still God. He's on the throne above it all, and he will bring us through if we'll trust him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the God of peace, that you are the God who brings us through trouble and to the, to the top of the mountain, dear God. And we ask that today for those who are struggling in their climb, that, Lord, you'll be the God of comfort and the God of peace. We pray that, dear God, in Jesus' name. We intercede, dear God, for those who are... Um, in every way mourning in the Carver family, but and, and for us too, we know several in our group have been sick. We know several that uh, maybe watching have all kinds of different needs that could cause them difficulty or issues. We just pray, dear God, that you in every way, in every way, minister in these needs and show how, how much trust you have. Be real in these, dear God, that need it today. We agree together for them. We agree, Jesus, for also just the... Um, the, the faith to grow, dear God, that you're in control, that we will turn to you in our time of need and never away. We ask, Father God, for um, drawing us to Christ in a deeper way. Lord, we want to know you deeper. And Lord, we believe through any kind of, of tragedy or any kind of loss that you would draw us into a deeper relation with you, dear God. And we believe that for tonight. We do thank you for the life of Sister Doris Carver. 
for the ministry that she had and just ask that the legacy that she leaves behind, dear God, will just continue to bloom and blossom and uh, go on for the touching of me. We love you tonight, dear God, and believe for good. If there's any tonight, dear God, that need a healing from COVID, we believe that you are the healer of, for, for, for all needs. So if there's a healing of something else, you paid the price on the cross for that. And we stand agreeing with that one that has need tonight. So we thank you for hearing this tonight. Amen. We're sure glad you could be with us tonight. And we look forward to being back with everybody soon from church. And uh, just continue to be in prayer for these. Uh, that even though we go through, it's been, it's been a little bit of a rocky time for these last days. But we know he's still on the throne. And he's bringing us through and bringing us out better on the other side. As the brother preaches, we went over the mountain, through the mountain whatever needs to happen. And we just stand believing with you and just encourage you just to hang in and uh, keep in touch with us. Text or um, we'll, we'll keep in touch with everybody by text. And text us and message us on Facebook. And we'll see you all again real soon. God bless you.